Tongues, a sign for unbelievers. In the entire 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul compares and contrasts the gift of prophecy, and, speaking in tongues. But in verse 21 and 22, Paul says something very interesting. Starting in verse 21 it reads like this. Verse 21, it is written in the law. By strange tongues and foreign lips I will speak to this people. But even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Verse 22, tongues, then, are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. But what does this mean? And why did God designate speaking in tongues as a sign for unbelievers? Let's see what the scriptures say. In verse 21 of 1 Corinthians, Paul is quoting Isaiah 28:11, which says, For with stammering lips, and another tongue will he speak to this people. The he here refers to God, and the this people refers to Israel. Another tongue simply means a different language. In the Strong's Concordance, the word stammering does not mean stuttering, as we define the word stammering in modern English. It's defined in Isaiah 28:11 as meaning mocking, or, to sarcastically make fun of. So, using this definition, it's saying, with mocking lips and a different language will God speak to His people Israel. But why is God saying He's going to speak to Israel in a mocking voice, and different language? The answer lies in verses 9 and 10 of Isaiah 28. Here's what it says according to the New Living Translation. Verse 9, Who does the Lord think we are? They ask. Why does He speak to us like this? Are we little children, just recently weaned? Verse 10, He tells us everything over and over, one line at a time, one line at a time, a little here, and a little there. The one speaking here are the priests of Israel. Verses 1-9 to of Isaiah describe these priests as being drunk and vomiting, and rebellious against God. Verse 7 says, they reel when they see visions and stagger as they render decisions. In verses 9 and 10, these drunken, rebellious priests are complaining about God's prophecies to them. They are annoyed that God keeps sending these prophets to them, saying the same things over and over, as if they are babies, just weaned from their mother's breast, who, because of their lack of intellect, need to have things repeated to them, over and over. In verse 10, the New Living Translation says, He tells us everything over and over, one line at a time, one line at a time, a little here, and a little there. The King James Version says it like this, For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. According to the Strong's Concordance, in Hebrew, the word translated as precept, is saw, spelled s, a, w, and means, used in mocking mimicry of Isaiah's words, and thus not a true divine command. The next phrase in the verse is, one line at a time. The English word translated as line, according to the Strong's Concordance, in Hebrew, is kop, spelled, q, a, w, and means, an onomatopoetic mimicry of Isaiah's words, perhaps senseless. An onomatopoeia is defined as the formation or use of words, such as buzz or murmur, that imitate the sounds associated with the objects or actions they refer to. So the Hebrew word ka is a term used to mimic and make fun of Isaiah's words. Much like, in English, if someone says something to us we don't like, we'll sarcastically reply by saying blah, blah, blah. In Hebrew, the words ka and saw are both used in a sarcastic way like the way we use the phrase blah, 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 in English to mock, and make fun of someone who says something to us that we find boring, repetitive, or annoying. In light of the translations we just reviewed, verse 10 can be re-read as, he tells us everything over and over, blah, 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 a little here a little there, blah, blah, blah. In their rebellious minds, Isaiah's message is fit only for babies, or as they said, those just weaned from milk. Verses 9 and 10 portray the sarcastic reaction these Judean leaders had to Isaiah's words of rebuke. They were tired of Isaiah's strictness and of his recurring application of God's laws. The string of monosyllables in verse 10 of may mean that the Judean leaders regarded Isaiah's message as meaningless or as child's play. So in verse 11, God responds to their rejection of his word by telling them that, because they feel that way, and disregard the message of his prophets, God will now speak to them in the same mocking way, in a foreign language they don't understand that sounds like nonsense to them. So this is why in verse 11, God saying to them, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Remember the word stammering is translated from a Hebrew word that means mocking, and another tongue means a different language. So with that in mind what God is saying to them is, since you mock my word and call it nonsense when it is not, from now on I will mock you by speaking to you in a language you don't understand, that actually does sound like nonsense to you. 
And then God repeats this sentiment in verse 13 where it says, And the word of the Lord will be to them. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. That they may go, and fall backward, and be broken, and snared, and taken. First, God spoke to them plainly through His prophets, but they rejected and mocked His message. So God allowed them to be overthrown by a foreign nation who spoke a foreign language they didn't understand. This is what the Apostle Paul was referencing when he said in 1 Corinthians 14 21 it is written in the law. By strange tongues and foreign lips I will speak to this people. But even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. This is why, in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul said tongues is a sign for unbelievers. The unbelievers being the unbelieving Israelites who rejected God's word in Isaiah 28. The tongues was the foreign language that was spoken by the foreign nation that God would allow the unbelieving Israelites to be overthrown and taken captive by. And these tongues were a sign that represented God's anger at Israel's rejection of Him. Again, in Isaiah 28, the unbelievers were the priests and Israelites who had rebelled against, made fun of, and mocked, God's message to them. Contrast this with hundreds of years later, in the times of 1 Corinthians 14, and now, the unbelievers are people who reject Jesus, and mock the gospel. In Isaiah's time, God responded to their rejection of His Word by allowing them to be taken captive by a pagan kingdom who spoke a language they didn't understand which sounded like nonsense to them, just like they had previously called God's Word nonsense. Now let's contrast this with what occurred in Acts chapter 2, when the disciples were initially baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Unlike in Isaiah 28, the disciples in Acts 2 were obedient to God, and as a result of their faith and obedience, were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and supernaturally spoke in all the various foreign languages, or tongues, of the foreigners gathered there, and were clearly understood by them to be praising God. Here's what it says in Acts 2, starting at verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Verse 6, Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Verse 8, And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Verse 9, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia. Verse 10, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Verse 11, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Let's sum it up this way. In Acts 2, the foreign unbelievers that were present, both heard, and understood, the believers supernaturally speaking the various native languages spoken by those unbelievers, the opposite of what God said would occur in Isaiah 28. In other words the tongue spoken in Acts 2 served as a sign to the unbelievers, that what was occurring, was the work of the Holy Spirit, and that God was in fact very pleased with them because they had believed and obeyed Him. This is why, in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says tongues are a sign for unbelievers. Contrast that with Isaiah 28 where God says He will use the foreign language of Israel's future captors as a sign of His anger at Israel's rebellion and disbelief. And in Acts 2, God baptized the faithful, obedient Israelites with the Holy Spirit, and use the resulting foreign tongues he supernaturally enabled them to speak, as a sign, to the unbelievers who were there, that God was pleased with the faith, and obedience of the Israelites who God had enabled to speak in tongues. Not only that, but God also used tongues as the initial evidence, or sign, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the unbelievers present in Acts 2. This is why Paul said tongues are a sign for unbelievers. Please like, subscribe and comment below. Thank you and God bless you. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, and get baptized in the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit gives the utterance, the first step is to admit you are a sinner, and need to repent, and ask Jesus to come into your life, and allow Him to be the Lord of your life, and make you a new creation in Him. Here is a simple prayer to start, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I repent of my sins. I am sorry I have sinned against you. Please change me, I have faith that you are God in the flesh, and that you love me so much that you died for me and took the punishment I deserved. Thank you Jesus. I love you Jesus. Please baptize me with your Holy Spirit and live inside me forever. Now praise God and start reading the Bible, and continue to pray daily. Amen and God bless you.